Shabbat shalom, everybody. May you be at peace and complete on the seventh day. The set apart day, as Tommy was saying. This day is set apart from all other days because Yah has said it was so. All right. Tommy, you, you remember how to give out a, an echo, right? So I want the armies of Israel present. You're supposed to echo me there. Present. So far. I said that because I know Tommy was in the military, so. He, he had to have done that many times. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome again to Yah's Holy Shabbat, Set Apart Day. We're here today with Torah portion by Yelek. It's a one-chapter portion, but it is packed. By Yelek means and went, and he went. Some actually I say that... He, he finished, and it has to do with probably what's known to many as the end or the last day of Moshe's life in this earth anyway, or in the flesh as we might say. In past years we looked at this portion showing Messiah as our leader that's pictured in Yahushua or Joshua. This year... I told Dan we're going to face some things that we may have shame of face with. And that's because it's Shah's word and he tells us these things. A lot of times we want to just focus on the things like Yahushua being commissioned as the leader and all that. But some of the words that we have in these Torah portions and the prophets and even in the New Testament are kind of hard words to swallow sometimes. So let's begin in Deuteronomy 31, where our portion starts. But we'll begin in Deuteronomy 16, and I'll read through 30. Deuteronomy 31, 16 through 30. Some hard words from the word of Yah, which is His Son, to His people, Yashorel. Deuteronomy 16 through 30. I'm reading in the greens, and it reads, And said Yah to Moshe, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers. You're going to die. And shall arise people this and go whoring. I can't apologize for you parents that have children here. This is Yah's word. And it says in the New Testament, If we're ashamed of his words, he'll be ashamed of us. And shall arise people this and go whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land whom they are going into their midst. And shall forsake me and shall break my covenant. Most of the people that aren't observing Shabbat today are breaking covenant. Which I cut with it and shall glow my anger against it and day that. And I shall forsake them and hide my face from them. Isn't it written as one of the commandments? You shall have no other gods in my face. So if we have gods in his face, he's hidden from us. And it shall be for consuming and shall find it evils many and distresses. And it shall say in day that, is it not because is not my God in my midst? that have found me evils these? Well, you want him with you. And I completely will hide my face in day that because of all the evils which it has done. It's kind of like the last, one of the last things I was showing in one of the other Torah portions, because you have done this. Like to the woman, because you have done this. To the serpent, because you have done this. To Adam, because you have done this. Because of all the evils which it has done. For it shall turn to God's other. Now then write for yourselves song this. 
and teach it to the sons of Yashirel. Put it in their mouths, so that shall be for me song this for a witness against the sons of Yashirel. For I shall bring them into the land which I have sworn to their fathers, flown with milk and honey. He's going to keep his promise and his part. And they shall eat and be satisfied and become fat. Jess, you run, right? And shall turn to Elohim's others. That's in the plural. God's others. And they shall serve them and despise me and break my covenant. And it shall be when I have found him evils many and distresses and shall testify a song this before him for a witness for not it shall be forgotten from mouth their seeds for I know their scheme which they are making today before I bring them into the land which I have sworn. He already knows. <laughs> Ahead of time everything that we think about what we think about doing, what we are doing. He knows it beforehand. And Moshe wrote, song this on day that, and taught it to the sons of Yashorel. And he commanded Yahusha ben Nun. He commanded Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into land which I have sworn to them, and I shall be with you. And it came to pass when finished Moshe writing the words of Torah this in a book until their completion that ordered Moshe the Levites bearing the Ark of the Covenant saying, Take the book of Torah this and you put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Yah your God that it may be there against you for a witness. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. That's our people. In fact, that's the whole world, but we're supposed to be a set-apart people and an obedient people. But he says we're a rebellious and stiff-necked people. Behold, why I am yet alive with you today. Rebellious you have been against Yah. And how much more after my death? Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, and I shall speak in their ears, Aleph Tav. I shall speak in their ears, Aleph Tav, words these, and cause to testify against them the heavens and the earth. All of creation is going to testify against us. For I know after my death that utterly you shall corrupt yourselves and turn away from the way which I have commanded you. Is that way Moses' way? That's God's way. It's the Word's way. That's the Messiah. Synonymous. And shall happen to you evil. Be'akarit. Hayamim. Most people when they see that in the Hebrew that says that's going to be all the way at the end. And that could just possibly be us. I don't know anything for sure when is the exact end. But we're closer than ever. In the latter days. Because you shall do evil in the eyes of Yah and make him angry with the work of your hands. And spoke Moshe in the ears of all the assembly of Yashorel words of song this until their conclusion. And next week or next Torah portion, if you ever look in the Hebrew like I've pointed out before, you'll see that Deuteronomy 32 is written completely different. It has two columns. Or two pillars. And it's a song. Song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. So we, we go whoring. That's why I said I can't apologize for Yah's word. So I know there's children here. But we're supposed to, as it said up there a minute ago, teach these words diligently to our children. So we go whoring. And that causes shame of face for us. Let's turn to Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3, and I'm going to read 1 through 9. Northern Kingdom already gone, right? If 
if I remember right, that's the way it goes. Northern kingdom already gone. But there's a remnant in Judah left in the land. Jeremiah 3, 1 through 9. I'll be reading in the King James Version. We go a whoring and it causes a shame of face for us. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, says Yah, with you all things are possible. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lean or lying with. You've been ravished in many ways. In many ways thou hast sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. We see that as symbolic of the Spirit, right? And thou hast a whore's forehead. He's not speaking to the nations. He's speaking to his people. And thou hast a whore's forehead. Thou refusest to be ashamed. See, everything concerning Ur the Elohim, Ur the God, should cause shame of face. But we have a whore's forehead. And we refuse to even blush at such things. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father? Thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. Yah said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, a very good king, I think I've seen Josiah return. He was back in the back a minute ago. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. In every which way you can think, we have transgressed. And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. Don't we still hear that today? Ah, that's the old stuff. That ain't for us. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw for when all the causes whereby backsliding Yasharel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Strong words. Strong words what should be our husband. Part of this whole letter here is a love letter to us from our husband, trying to get us to not play the whore and have shame of face. But we do have a whore's forehead with no shame of face. And it's going to get worse in the end times. Let's go to Revelation 17, 1 through 8, again in the King James Version. Let's go now to the whore of whores. <coughs> Excuse me. Revelation 17, 1 through 8. And it reads, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. And I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. We know from Revelation 2, waters are peoples. With whom the kings of the earth had committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth had been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. I always refer to the one where it talks about being drunk but not with wine and staggering but not with strong drink. Falsehood, 
Shaker is the strong drink in the Bible. Shaker. Pardon my Hebrew, by the way. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast. Full of names of blasphemy. And having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in a cup in her hand, a golden cup in her hand. Now all that up until this next part sounds real good. Decked out pretty fine. What's a woman in Scripture? Church, congregation? Well, you know, there's many churches and congregations, but just this week, I think it was Indiana, I heard the Church of Satan is suing because they say banning abortion is against the Constitution. So there's many churches, and some of them look real good. But then it follows and said that that golden cup in her hand is full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. That whore's forehead? Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of whores and abominations of the earth. And I saw that the woman was drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahushua. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So there's been many congregations and Churches, whatever name they go by, decked out real good, but they actually persecute the true saints and make martyrs of those who truly follow Yahushua. And you guys might have experienced some of that. All who live righteously, which just means following His ways in Yahushua, will be persecuted. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, copying that song that we read, was and is not the one who was and is is to come. Well, that's the antitype. And the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Now, I don't know exactly where the abyss is. Do any of you know exactly where the abyss is? But in Revelation, at the fifth trumpet, it says it's going to be opened up. And the beast that ascendeth out of that pit is actually going to kill the two witnesses. Is the way it reads. And it says here that that woman that is drunk with the blood of the saints rides that beast that actually comes out of the abyss. What that exactly means, like I said, I don't know, but it don't sound too good. And the woman, like I said, is symbolic of a congregation, a whore. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. They're going to gather together in that congregation and gladly marvel and wonder and ride. So this one, this one has no shame of face and will not repent. And we see that again in Revelation Skip to the next chapter, 18, and I will begin reading in verse 4 and go through 7. No shame of face, will not repent, and those that ride along with her are of one mind. Revelation 18, 4 through 7. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her lawlessness. It says iniquities there, but you guys all know what that means. It's a church 
that has no regard, no respect for Yah's Torah whatsoever. What did I say? I was going to read through seven. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double under her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Said the same thing at the beginning, right, about the cup of the Amorites, not quite full yet. Once that cup is full, and as we look around the earth today, and I, I was watching the news again the other day, and I told my wife when I was getting ready for work, you know, just watching the news, I said, man, this place is wicked. I mean, just, just clip after clip after clip, things being caught on camera and all that, and on, on the 911 calls and all that, just, you know, I'm ashamed of the life I lived in many ways and all that, but it's bad. But I don't ever want to say, you know, I don't want to, I'd rather be like the one, forgive me a sinner, than say, I'm glad I'm not like that person. Because just as it, the song says, but for the grace of Yah, there I go. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. See how she has no shame? None whatsoever. I think it's actually, I didn't look it up this time, but I think it's actually in Jeremiah tells you this is the queen of heaven. He says the same thing. Well, who's the queen of heaven? Easter, right? Ishtar. Isn't there not many congregations who ride along with that harlot today? But they say they sit a queen. They're not a widow. They believe they're the one that's really married to the husband or betrothed to him. And she'll see no sorrow. You might even, well, we'll, we'll get there in a minute. So as Deuteronomy 22.12 reminds us, it reminds us to grab hold of the Gedalim. Because that's the word that's used in Deuteronomy 22.12. And remember the Torah. Because when we start off on the journey coming out of Egypt, they're called tzitzit, or plural tzitziot, I think. And it means to blossom. But at the end of our journey, when we're about to cross over, it says, grab hold of the Gedalim, which comes from the word Gedal, meaning great and like a tower. So that's what we need to do in the latter days is we, we remember to, need to remember to grab hold of these because it reminds us not to go, what? A whoring. After what we want to go a whoring after. We're supposed to stick and remember His Word. So that's why we need to do that. Because that's what the instructions say. Why remember the Torah? Why should we remember the Torah? This Torah portion in the next says that we may worship other gods. Now, it actually says, especially in Deuteronomy 32, just like it says here, in the latter days, in the last days, you may end up worshiping other gods if we don't grab hold and remember His words. That's why we need to remember the Torah. Deuteronomy 32 and Paul agree that behind the stones and stocks that Jeremiah talked about? Deuteronomy 32, and Paul says the same thing. Behind those stones and stocks are the Shadim. That's the Strong's Hebrew number 7700. The Shadim are malignant devils and demons. That's what's behind the stones and Stocks, little gold, silver idols, 
trees, anything you set up to worship besides the God of Yasharel behind that are the gods, Elohim. But they're not all nice fellows. A timely message of, at trumpets last time I was here. Came down for Yom Teruah. Sound the alarm because the gods are returning. Dan played a couple clips from Jonathan Kahn of the book that he has, Return of the Gods. So that was a very timely message. Yom Teruah, I have a hard time saying that, is a sound of alarm. And the gods, well, the, the scripture speaks about it. It's not me. It speaks about are the gods. And the things that are behind them are actually malignant devils and demons. So the gods are returning, and we are warned not to go a whoring after them. Not everything that's malignant, though, looks all that bad, as we've seen with that woman riding the beast again. So that's why we need to keep studying the Word so we're not deceived because there's going to be some things happening that uh, might even throw the elect off track. So let's go there in Second Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 2. Might even throw the elect off track. I'm having a hard time finding Thessalonians right now. It's in the I know it's in the Jesus side of the book. I know it's over there. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1, going through 15. And this is Paul writing. He says, Now we beseech, beseech you, brethren, by the coming of Adonai Yahushua, Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye... Be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Mashiach is at hand. That's kind of like saying, you know, don't be all riled up like it's going to happen right now. There's some things that got to be happening first. And he's going to tell us about it. Same thing Messiah said, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first. And that's what I was saying. We'll get there in a minute. Some of these congregations, they take that to mean we're snatched out of here. We're not going to see any sorrow. We're, we're a queen. We're, we're the bride of the husband. When you look that up, that, what does it actually say? It's going to be an apostasy. What's going to cause the apostasy? Well, he just told you, don't let no man deceive you by any means. There's going to be such a great deception coming in the end times that it's going to cause an apostasy, that those who should be following the God of Israel are going to end up following something else. Except there come a fallen away first, an apostasy. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man to lawlessness. That's how we'll know. Does it line up with Torah? You know, we read in other uh, places in Deuteronomy that, you know, Yah's going to test you. You've been studying my word? You know, we're not to test him, but he'll put us to the test. How will you know a man of sin? Well, is it like, you know, what the churches say or is it what the word says? It's the word. That's how you know what sin is. It's the transgression of Torah. That's what the New Testament says. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worship, so that he as Elohim, sitting in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is Elohim. It's going to be a 
a lot of things happening to her. Some, if we're not even careful, what does it say? Take heed. Lest if you think you stand, you're going to fall yourself. A lot of things happening that we, if we're not careful, might even think that this one is Elohim. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, right? It's been at work in, in this day and before, back in the Torah, right? Even before the mountain, Nimrod's time. What about before the flood? For the mystery of lawlessness doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. A lot of thoughts on what that actually means. And then, and then, there's going to be a revealing. There's a revealing in Revelation of our true Adonai. But then there's going to be another revealing. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom Adonai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So was this one revealed before or after the brightness of his coming? He's revealed before the brightness of the coming of the Messiah. Even him whose coming, being the Messiah, is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, of betorlessness, in them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth, thy word is truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Elohim himself shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Yeah, that is a big wow. And that's not the only place where he says he'll turn them into reprobates and send strong delusion, you know, we always have that saying, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. You know, and if you want something that don't align with Torah, you might just get it. We've talked before how when I mentioned the Shadim, how in Revelation, uh, the fifth trumpet, there's some people who worship demons and devils openly. Like we just talked about, the church of Satan that's uh, uh, suing the state of Indiana, proud and loud. Well, be careful what you worship and what you want because you just might get it. And then that's what Yah's going to send him strong delusion. He's the one who's going to open the, the pit too. Nothing moves in creation without him allowing it. That they should believe a lie and they all might be damned. That's some harsh words. Who believe not the truth but had pleasure pleasure and lawlessness. But we are bound to give thanks always to Elohim for you, brethren, beloved of Adonai, because Elohim hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification, being set apart, as Tommy said, kadosh, of the spirit and belief of the truth, the word. Whereunto he called you by our gospel, the good news to the obtaining of the glory of our Adonai, Yahushua Mashiach. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Put on that whole armor. Stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught. That's what's in the word, not those traditions of men. You're warned about that by the Messiah, whether by word or by our letter. So the lie... The lie that many believe it will be a very great lie. <coughs> Excuse me. The lie that many believe is going to be a very great lie. And again, we're going to go to Revelation for that, Revelation 13. And we'll look at some of what it tells us. Revelation 13. See, I was just joking earlier, Dan, but when you asked how to spell my last name, when you walked away, I told, I told Carmen that just like Revelation, that's, that's how you spell it. Because 
Dan asked me if I had an I in my last name. I said, it's, no, it's Revelis with all E's. It's kind of like Revelation. So let's go to Revelation 13 and read verses 11 through 18. And we're going to see some of what the uh, big lie is all about. In the latter days, of course. Revelation 13, 11, and it reads, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. <laughs> what does that remind you of? Wolves in sheep's clothing look like the Messiah, maybe? If Satan himself presents himself as a minister of light, his ministers will do likewise, right? So he can present himself as one having two horns like a lamb, as being the lamb himself, exalting himself like he is Elohim. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. What does a dragon do? Well, let's see. He breathes fire. <laughs> well, what does a dragon do? Well, we see in Revelation that serpent of old, the dragon, the devil, and Satan. It's all in one verse. So what is, he's called the serpent in the garden, but he's still also called the dragon in the same verse that I just talked about. What does he do? He deceives and he comes to you and he says, you will be like God. Will be like God. But first thing he does is he talks to you about God for one. First thing he does is he comes up and says, did God really say? That's why I always say one of the first things when somebody, especially a stranger, might come up to you and wants to talk to you about God, you ought to throw up a red flag right away. Because that's the method. That's the method of the dragon. Even though they may, you know, have a nice suit on or if it's a woman, have a nice dress. They may look like a lamb. But you better be careful because they may speak just like a dragon. And you'll know, you'll know if you believe that the Torah is forever. Because that's what repent means, right? Turn back. Go back to the ancient ways. The ways that we were told from the very beginning and then we got the, the whore's forehead and started turning to other gods and other ways. But you'll know. Verse 12, and this one who has the horns and looks like a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon, he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. When I did that the other day, when I did the 12 curses followed by the 12 amens, the, the thing I pointed out, the first curse was, Cursed is he who makes an image and puts it in a secret place. The first beast whose daily wound was healed, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, if you haven't read that before and you've seen something like that, do you think it could deceive you into thinking there's something special about this person? But you've read it. You've read the word. Verse 14. And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. What's a beast in Scripture? It's nothing more than a kingdom, right? You see that all through uh, uh, Daniel especially talking about beast. You know, that's a to me, uh, unfortunate translation when it calls the living creatures beast, but a beast more often than not, it's just a, it's a kingdom. And we know in the end there's going to be some, some type of one world kingdom, and it's a beast. And this one's going to give power to that. Power to do in the sight of that beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. Cursed is the man who makes an image. Make an image to the beast, 
which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, there again, I can't claim that I know exactly what anything means. How that's going to go down, I don't know. I'm sure you've heard all kinds of teachings on how it could be an actual man, how it could be a, 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 some kind of fault that happens to this kingdom and it falls apart for a while and comes back. I don't know. But we need to keep our eyes open and our ears. He had power. Okay, 14 again. That they should make an image to the beast and had, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast, they should be killed. Now, I don't know exactly how that will go down either. It says that they should be killed, but we know not everybody is going to be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, I've always said, you know, John, he tells us he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Well, today is Yah's day. So if you, if you have a certain mark as a type, I'm not saying it's the end thing, but if you're marked in a certain way and don't have the mark of God, you'll be out there doing what it says right here. Buying and selling. Because you don't respect Yah's Torah. You don't. Or you've been deceived, but you'll be out there on the Lord's day buying and selling if you're marked in the wrong way. Now, it's not the end game because we know those who finally take the mark, it will not go well for them. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. You guys, have any of you heard of Holisa Alwine? Okay. Well, I, was, I listened to one of her teachings one time, but and I've thought these things myself, but as you see in the book of Daniel, that a man could be turned to a beast, Right? But she brought out all the way in the beginning on the sixth day, man and beast were both created by the Creator, which says the seventh day is holy, by the way. But just like Nebuchadnezzar, if we're men who don't listen to the Creator God, the one who created all things, you're literally acting like a beast. You're just doing your own will. What did the Messiah say? Nevertheless, thy will be done. So if we were doing our own thing, we're basically, that's what animals do. I mean, I remember Albert doing a teaching a long time ago, and that's what he said, you know, about men that do certain things. He said, animals do that. But men who follow Yah, they try to do what Yah says. And where we fall short, I always like to point out, he's provided a remedy for us. But you got to keep believing that he is who he said he is and sent by the Father. So we read some of those miraculous things, wonders, miracles, fire coming down from heaven. Fire coming down from heaven. A false lake of fire, perhaps? Right? Like I said, if somebody and you didn't know brought that down, what if you've heard of the lake of fire before, but you didn't read how all these things are supposed to transpire and stuff and not contemplating? There's the lake of fire. The king of Babylon, 
He had a fiery furnace, right? He had a fiery furnace for those who wouldn't bow to him. Isn't what that the lake of fire is? Ultimately, if you don't bow to the true king, you're going into the fiery furnace. So we see type and anti-type throughout the scriptures. The lie. The lie of the God who answers by fire, perhaps. Isn't that what the Bible says, right? The showdown, like with Elijah. The God who answers by fire is the true God. Yet Elohim's word tells us ahead of time there's one coming who's going to deceive with such things. He may claim to be God, exalt himself as God and above everything that God is, and even bring down fire to show you that he is the God who answers by fire. I don't want to get too much into the temple stuff, but you guys know what's going on, right? So these things may start rolling, maybe not, because we hear, I don't like to get too excited about too much stuff that I hear anymore, because I, you know, Sometimes I'm wanting, like uh, Albert says also, you know, woe to those who desire the day of the Lord. But we don't desire the day and the tragedy and stuff that goes along with it. We just say even so come because we desire him and righteous judgment in the lives of his creation. So the the lie of the God who answers by fire, perhaps, I think that's going to be a big one there. And if we're alive when it happens... At least we'll have read these things <coughs> and we'll be able to get a grip on what's going on. Just remember what I read in Thessalonians, that his coming, the true Messiah, it says is after the working of Satan. After the working of Satan. You know, just, just did trumpets, a lot of, lot of talk about trumpets, but we know there's seven listed in scripture and that says at the last trump you know so that that's kind of easy there when you put that but then you have all these other teachings well you got this trumpet and that trumpet and the, the trump of god's different than the seven trumpets so i'll let you uh, work all that out in your own mind what you think that means but i still say that he says behold i come as a thief and the last time he says it it's in Revelation 16. And it's even after wrath's being poured out. But we're not supposed to be subject to wrath, right? Can, can the God of all creation protect his people even through wrath? So I would kind of, when he says, Behold, I come as a thief, blessed are they who keep their garments so they don't walk with the shame of a whore's forehead. I would kind of keep that scripture in mind because all these things of miracles and falsehood and deception could go all the way to that point where he literally said, Behold, I come as a thief. That's the last time that I know that he says it is in Revelation 16, and it's almost at the end of all the wrath. But he is able to protect his own as a hoopa and as a suka around us. So let's, let's end by getting strong and courageous in our Torah portion. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 31, and we'll end by reading the first part of it. Deuteronomy 31, 1 through 8. Let's get strong and courageous. Vayelech Moshe veyedevar et ha devarim ha And went Moshe and spoke words these to all Yashorel. And he said to them, A son of a hundred and twenty years I am today. Not I am able anymore to go out and to come in. Why is that? Because y'all said you're going to die on the mountain. And Yah has said to me, Not you shall cross over yard in this. Yah, your Elohim, is the one crossing over before you. 
He shall destroy nations these from before, from before, and you will dispossess them. Yahusha is the one crossing before you, as has spoken Yah, and shall do Yah to them as he has done to Sihon and to Og. See, this is, it's all told to us that these are types and shadows for our warning and admonition. Even the giants of the latter days, he's saying just like he did to those giants of old, that's what he's going to do to them. If we, if we trust in him. Just like he did to Sihom and Og, kings of the Amorites, those boasters. You see any boasting going on in the world today? Those boasters. And to their land, which he destroyed them, and shall give them up, Yah, before you. And you shall do to them according to all the command which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Not do fear them and not tremble because of them. It's like all these people, the elites in the world, the economic forum and all these people telling us what they're going to do to us. You know, and we do sit there and sometimes think, oh, no. But then as the days pass, they're not doing anything, but they're boasting. They're Amorites. They say what their plans are. Most people can't even control their own household, <laughs> let alone a whole world. But they think they've got it down. And you shall do to them according to the command which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous, not do fear them, and not tremble because of them. For Yah, your God, is He, the one going with you. Not He shall fail you, and not forsake you. Stated again in the Jesus side of the book, right? I will never leave you nor forsake you. And summoned Moshe Yahusha and said to him before all the eyes of all Yashirel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go in. This is really the type and shadow of our Messiah who's going to take us into the everlasting promise. For you shall go in with people this, to the land which has sworn Yah to their fathers to give to them, and you shall cause to inherit it them. And Yah is he, the one going before you. Himself he shall be with you, not he shall fail you, and not forsake you, not do fear, and not be dismayed. For our warning and our admonition, tell in the end from the beginning, and the end could be soon. <laughs> could be soon. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not going to even get close to trying to set dates or anything else. But like I was saying, when you just watch the news and all that, this place is pretty wicked. And I would think that cup's getting pretty full. But it's not for me to say when the cup of the Amorites is full. When the cup of that whore of Babylon is full. That's for the Father. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you for watching a teaching from Amet HaTorah. You are ever in the Odessa area. We would love to welcome you to our Shabbat service, 11 a.m. every Sabbath. For more information or for more teachings, feel free to find us on the web, www.amethatoraodessa.com. Also, you can find us on Facebook. Thank you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.